Oh dear. And it's broken. So I've been working on an electric snowboard project and aside from me uh, twisting the motor cables off during a failed test, the project's actually coming along quite nicely and is actually working a lot better than I actually thought it would. It's a suspended motor electric snowboard build with the goal of being used for backpacking on dense packed or semi-frozen snow on flat ground like trails. The snowboard deck itself is just a run-of-the-mill budget used snowboard that has a square hole cut out in the back for where the motor goes. The motor itself is a 36 volt 500 watt baffin e-bike hub motor suspended by two 3d printed arms that at rest allow the 3d printed tread to sit below the plane of the board so that in softer snow it can dig in and also flexes upwards to be flush with the bottom of the board on harder and denser snow and each arm is mounted to the deck using four heavy duty hurricane screws to spread out the load from the motor into the board the uh, test that broke the motor happened because the first iteration of the mounting arms split along the inadequate outer rim of the mounts where the drop-in axle sits and this allowed the axle to spin freely with the a crap ton of momentum and the cable was zip tied to the arm so that just let it twist itself completely free. That's an expensive $400 mistake but it's not the end of the world. Until the replacement motor comes in I can use the broken one to do downhill durability testing with the new and improved motor mount arms or what I call the Nikola Motors test. I redesigned the motor mounts to be a lot thicker around where the motor mounts to it and I designed a little cutout piece that inserts there to reinforce it which will be 3d printed out of solid stainless steel which is currently on order and should be delivered with in a few weeks. This slots over the axle and is secured to the motor mount arms with four M4 bolts, spreading out the torque loads from the motor and hopefully preventing another break-free event like the last time. I finished 3D printing the initial tread design made out of solid ABS, printed in two halves and secured in place with 36 M3 bolts through the hub motor's spoke holes. The tread design was a super simple design to try and bite into the packed snow on trails. I may have to revisit this design if I find that there's snow buildup in the recesses or if it just can't bite into the snow enough to move me forward. Forward. Instead of standard snowboard bindings, I opted instead to use these MaxTrack like foot pads, 3D printed out of just regular old PLA, so that I can bail off the board if shit gets cray. It's not optimal and makes turning harder, but the idea is that I can dig in my boots to the aggressive spiky pads to spin the board around just enough to adjust course. Even with dense packing snow accumulated on them, the idea seems to work exactly as I hoped. While I was out filming B-roll for this video, I did some downhill testing using just the placeholder 3D printed brackets that I have in there. I was having way too too much fun. I kept doing it over and over again. And even without the metal reinforcing bracket, the arms were holding up just fine and the traction pads kept me rooted to the board until I decided to bail. Another finding from today's fun is that the weight and grip of the motor actually acts as a rudder when going downhill, keeping the front of the snowboard pointed in the right direction. I also found that the drag caused by the hurricane screw heads on the bottom of the board doesn't produce nearly as much drag as I thought it would. I'm sure it would be noticeable to experienced snowboarders, but for the impact to a motorized board, it's nowhere near near as bad as I feared. For reference, I'm a pretty heavy dude at 240 pounds. As you might have guessed from the test that broke the motor cable, I did get the ESC successfully programmed to work with the e-bike hub motor, controlled with an electric skateboard style wireless remote. The ESC and remote are a Flipski 75100 and a VX1 respectively. Powering the whole setup is just the 36 volt batteries I borrowed from my e-skate build, and in fact is why I chose that e-bike hub motor to begin with, so I could just reuse the batteries I already had and not have to buy new batteries specific to this build. The the squirrel's nest of electronics is kept in this waterproof case to protect it from water and salt. I'll eventually cut a hole in here for the cable to poke out to connect to the new motor once it's time, but for now I'm just leaving everything in there all nice and sealed during testing. And this whole build is actually surprisingly simple. I'll leave a link to all the parts and a rough how-to guide in the description so you can build your own. Just leave me a comment if you need anything specific explained. The only thing left to do aside from replacing the motor is to seal the exposed fiberglass innards where I cut out the hole for the motor so that it doesn't degrade from water and snow. And I also need to wax up the bottom of the board to get it nice and slidey. Once the proper steel motor reinforcing brackets arrive, I can bolt those in and start doing some more aggressive downhill testing to see how these motor mount arms stand up to abuse. At this point in the project, I've nailed down confidence in the electronics and the fundamental feasibility of the whole thing, but those motor mount arms still continue to worry me. Even with the reinforcing bracket, there's still a chance it's not strong enough, especially once the ABS gets cold from the winter temperatures. There's also a chance that the motor just can't dig into the snow enough to propel my heavy ass forward, but aside from that, I'm really excited to get this thing up and running. 